Good morning. For those of you just waking up on a Saturday morning after a long Friday night of socially distanced partying, I'm here to welcome you back with open arms from six feet away, of course, because I'm not trying to catch COVID. My name is James, and I am your U.S. racing expert for bettinggods.com. Here with another U.S. racing report. It's Saturday, October the 10th, and I'm excited for what we have in store. We have stakes action from Belmont Park. Uh, before we get to that, though, um, do you like money? If you answered yes to that question, uh, go directly to bettinggods.com. Join over 120,000 members uh, on the website. We have tipsters that pick horse racing, basketball, ice hockey, greyhound racing, cricket. Uh, I'm going to shout out one today. It's RF Racing Tips. They're, uh, they're showing a profit of over $200 so far for the month. So go check them out. Uh, RF Racing Tips at bettingguys.com. I'm going to get into the racing from Belmont today. So we've been playing races from Keeneland pretty much since the beginning of, of the Keeneland meet uh, last week. We've been having success there. So why am I going to Belmont Park for Saturday's racing? I'll answer that question. So they're expecting rain in Lexington, Kentucky, where Keeneland is based uh, on Saturday. When it rains, you never know what the turf condition is going to be like. We don't know if they're going to be rained off the turf, uh, or if they'll be racing on soft turf or yielding. For me, sending picks out to people internationally, it makes it difficult because I'm giving – I might give a horse that's going to run well on the turf and they'll rein it off and that horse will run um, not so well on the turf, on the dirt, I should say. So it's, a, it's much easier to not have to deal with the weather uh, because then we don't have to scramble and make changes or anything like that. Uh, we're going to go play racing from Belmont Park. They've got a stakes uh, card there. It's full of grade one races, the Champagne Stakes, the Jackie Club Gold Cup, the Frisette, tons of racing action there. And I'm based in New York, so I've got plenty of history at Belmont Park. We don't need Keeneland today. They can have their rain. We're going to share some content. Um, I have – we're going to start at race number one. And we, I know it's a stakes card, but this is a maiden special weight race that we're actually going to start things off with. It's going to be run at seven furlongs on the turf for three-year-olds, uh, three-year-olds and up fillies and mares. And look no further than the rail to find our pick. Uh, Alemia or Alamia. I'm terrible with pronouncing names like these, especially from a first time starter, because I haven't heard the announcer say it yet. Uh, eight to one on the morning line. Trainer is Christoph Clement, who's only winning at 29%. With first time starters, he's winning at 26%. He's got his main man, Joel Rosario, uh, in the irons, and they win together at a rate of 22%. Breaking from the rail, which I don't love for a first time starter, but. Uh, this race has two horses, including one that you see here, Pinch of Grace, for Chad Brown. Uh, there's another horse that Chad Brown has on the outside. And if you don't know, Chad Brown's the top turf trainer in the country, uh, one of the best out at it. Uh, one of his main guys is, is Joel Rosario. And to not see Rosario named on either of Chad Brown's horses tells me that Alemia uh, might have some class to her. Rosario usually only rides uh, Christoph Clement's best horses. So we're going to give Alemia a chance at, at nice odds in race number three. What we like about Alemia, aside from the fact that the connections are, are pretty strong, take a look at some of the breeding on Alemia. This is Alemia's dam, double jackpot, and we don't really see much there. She, she raced once back in 2012. She finished 10th in a race at, at Keeneland. Uh, and then they sent her to the breeding shed, and she popped out a couple of kids. So these are them. Stays in Vegas, Miss Technicality, and Alemia. Alemia has not raced. She'll be racing for the first time tomorrow. Uh, stays in Vegas, raced in 2015, and actually made her debut in a stakes race, which she won by six lengths at odds of six to one. Uh, after that, she raced primarily in stakes races. Actually, her entire career she raced in stakes races. I'm looking at that right now. And she's two heads away from being a grade one winner twice, right here and here. Stays in Vegas uh, is in the bloodlines. We take a look even further uh, back. Miss Technicality raced uh, July of uh, 2018. 
also won first time out at, at nine to one. So precocity is in the bloodlines. We're going with Alemia to take our first race of the day at Belmont Park as we shift things over to our first graded stakes race of the day. This is the grade one champagne for two year old males at a mile. And I'm going to preface some of these races by saying we don't have a, a whole lot to pick from in, in these two year old races. There's only a six horse field in the champagne stakes. So we can't do too much about the odds. Uh, but what I will say is that we're going to take a stand against the favorite. Every handicapper out there is, is saying Jackie's warrior is going to win this race. Uh, and, and he, and he might, he might just be best, but uh, he is undefeated. He's raced three times and he's improved in every start. So from five furlongs to six furlongs to seven furlongs, you see his numbers have gone up. His most recent race, he beat the other main contender here, reinvestment risk. And he was wrapped up late. That's what you want to see. And that's why all the handicappers are picking him. I'm going to go with reinvestment risk in this race uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, Jackie's warrior. Uh, you see that he was coming back a little bit to reinvestment risk at the end of that race. It was a very fast run race. Jackie's warrior did a lot of running on the front end and reinvestment risk was actually closing in. You see, they call that a V pattern where the uh, reinvestment risk was behind by two lengths, behind by five, and then was behind by two lengths at the wire. So he was gaining some ground. Um, I think he might be better bred for the distance as Jackie's warrior. Let's take a look at the breeding on Jackie's warrior for a moment. The sire of Jackie's warrior is McLean's music who raced exactly one time at six furlongs, blew it out of the water with a, a speed figure of 114, which is almost unheard of in a first time starter. Uh, the dam of McLean's music was forest music who was all sprint. So let's take a look at, the dam of uh, Jackie's warrior, Unicorn Girl. I don't know if I've ever seen this before. Unicorn Girl, in her entire career, only sprinted. They didn't even try, they didn't even attempt to make this horse run long. So it looks like Jackie's warrior is bred to be more of a sprinter and, and now stretching out to a mile at odds on favoritism. We're gonna take our chances with reinvestment risk that is uh, in the grade one Champagne Stakes. That's race number four at Belmont Park. Moving on to race number five, we have the grade one Frisette Stakes. This is the female counterpart to the Champagne for two-year-old fillies at a mile. And the filly we like in this race is named Day Out of the Office. That is the five horse. So we see it's a pretty evenly matched race, I'll be honest. Uh, it was between Vequist, Cantata, and day out of the office here. Even Joy's Rocket has some potential. Should be a pretty contested pace. Uh, but once I took a look at day out of the office's race at the, in the Skylerville at Saratoga, that's what really was made the, the decision for me on who to pick. I'm going to share uh, the last race that she ran. So give me a moment here. I'll share my screen. Start broadcast. So this is going to be from a stakes race at Saratoga and day out of the office is actually the seven horse in this race. We're going to speed them up a little bit, get them to the turn uh, backtrack. There we go. So right now day out of the office, 19 to one, by the way, in this race. So she's got the yellow and red cap on the outside and nobody expects her to win much less the way she's about to win. Watch her kick it into gear. She's three wide in the red and yellow silks and just inhales the front runner and keeps going. She kicks clear and she looks like a horse that is not gonna mind getting more distance. I watched uh, the races that a couple other of these fillies in this, this race have run and they looked like they were getting a little tired at the end of their sprint races. This one looked like she wanted to keep on going. Uh, for that reason, we're going with day out of the office in the Frisette Stakes, and let me change it back to my screen. I'll have to go back to our photos. Bear with me for a moment. We're gonna move on to the race number six, which is another maiden special weight. And in this one, we're gonna go with Overtook. So, there we are. 
This is a six furlong race for two year olds and races like these pop up on, on big graded cards just like this one pretty much every year. I remember a couple of years ago, trainer Todd Fletcher had a horse named Montauk who was something like three quarters of a million dollars they paid for him, maybe even more than that. And Montauk went off and won by 12 lengths. Uh, and I think he ended up getting injured, but he debuted on Jackie Club Gold Cup Day for the, these connections. And this overtook reminds me of Montauk. Overtook is a million dollar purchase, uh, trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden by Jose Ortiz, working with purpose and has tons of workouts there. Jose Ortiz is winning a 30% clip uh, for trainer Todd Pletcher. So the connections are doing well. When we take a look at the breeding on Overtook, this is the first foal out of a dam named Got Lucky. Now, Got Lucky is, she's a graded stakes winner, actually a grade one winner. She won the Spinster back here in, in 2015. Um, but Got Lucky was a very good, good filly. Uh, and we see she debuted with a 77 speed figure. Uh, breeding alone, the million dollar purchase, the connections, I think even the four to one odds, all signs point to this is a horse we want to take a chance at. Overtook in race number six at Belmont Park. Let's move on to race number seven. This is another maiden special weight, a mile and a 16th for tur on the turf for two year olds. And we're going to go again with a Christophe Clement horse, the number five, Big Everest. A couple of the races on today's card feature a lot of first-time starters. Uh, the race we just talked about was one of them, and this race, race number seven, is one of them. So it's a guessing game in a lot of ways on who's going to win and who's really working out well. The racing form only tells you so much. Um, but one thing that I've been sticking with that has been winning us some money is these connections, Christoph Clement and Jockey Joel Rosario, whenever they team up, they're very dangerous, 22%, 26% with first-time starters. Take a look at the breeding of this horse, Big Everest. Uh, the Dem, name, her name was Longface. She actually raced for these connections for a short while, and she was stead, uh, fed a, a steady diet of stakes races where she had speed figures in the mid to high 80s. So the breeding is there for Longface. I'm sorry, for, uh, for Big Everest. We like his chances a lot, and I think four to one is, is pretty fair odds on this one. Again, this race is a bit of a crapshoot, but based on the connections and how they've been doing, we're going to take our chances with that. Moving on to race number eight. This is the grade one flower ball at a mile and a quarter on the turf for fillies and mares, three-year-olds up. And we'll take a minute to go through the field here. The number one is Caviar Park for... Uh, trainer Chad Brown and number two is my sister Nat for trainer Chad Brown. He stacked the deck in this race to grade one, of course. So they're trying to get that money. We're gonna switch pages here. Civil Union is the three. Uh, she's going for her fourth win in a row and she's been improving steadily in her last couple races. Joelle Rosario stays with her. She's two for two at Belmont and uh, she's already won a race at the distance. As we keep going down the line, La Signere. I see a lot of handicappers picking this one because they see the eight to one morning line and they see their speed figures are close to the rest of these. I can't, I can't fault them for that. The five is Bo Bell. Uh, she's been mixing it up with these, as you see in her running lines here. She hasn't been too far away from them and she's lined at 12 to one. She's a nice value play. Uh, the horse we're gonna go with in this race is the six, Nay Lady Nay, for who else? Chad Brown. Uh, Nay Lady Nay is racing for Chad Brown, Ayrad Ortiz. And what I like best about her is if we take a look at the, the pace figures of this race, I'm going to go back and just show you how this race is liable to shape up. Uh, Cambria Park is probably going to be in a stalking position, but not my sister Nat, for example, has she's completely devoid of early speed. She puts it up an 8 and then a 126. She does no running early and relies on her late run. So she would benefit from a pace duel, which she's probably not going to get as one of the favorites. Civil Union, uh, maybe a, a stalker closer. Okay, so we have no pace yet in this race. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can find somebody. La Signere, same thing, likes to close in. Bo Bell, 
more late foot than early foot. Uh, nay, lady, nay is the same thing, but the 80 tells me that she'll be closer to the pace than most of these, and the 101 shows that she has got the closing kick to make a difference in the lane. She's going for a third in a row. Uh, this will be her sixth, hopefully her sixth win in nine starts. Uh, nay, lady, nay in the grade one flower bowl. We're going to close things up with the grade one Jockey Club Gold Cup at a mile and a quarter on the main track. This race has a long and storied history of, of champions winning it. And the fact that the Breeders' Cup is a month away, the Breeders' Cup Classic, it's really kind of put a damper on the horses that are running in this race. <laughs> they only got a field of five, and they're, it's not the most robust field we've ever had in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. We'll put it that way. Uh, the Preakness was last weekend, and I think that took some, some good horses out of this as well. But it is kind of a competitive race. Don't get me wrong. They're just not the, the big names you expect to see. Uh, look no further than the, than the rail for our selection here, Happy Saver. And the reason, the main reason we're going with Happy Saver here, aside from the connections, uh, Todd Fletcher and Yorada Ortiz being uh, just doing a super job. But Happy Saver is the only confirmed front runner with the 102 in the pace rating. See that 102 there? If you look at prioritize, his early foot is a 58, and he closes in to a 117. Name changer, 82-109. Let's keep it going. Take a look at the other two. Tacitus, this is going to be the likely favorite. He's an 83-107, and Mystic Guide is a 79-112. So the only confirmed front runner is the horse that also happens to have the rail for connections that are doing a great job. He's one for one at Belmont Park, and... We're going to take a bit of a chance uh, to say Happy Saver is Happy Saver's going to step up and be able to beat older horses in this race. A couple things about this. Uh, Happy Saver and Mystic Guide both uh, opted out of the running in the Preakness uh, to be able to run here in this race. So the trainer actually had an eye on this race for a little while, the trainers of both of those horses. Um, I'll also mention that I viewed – the last race that each of these horses ran, knowing that they have to run a mile and a quarter on Saturday. And that was what really sealed the deal for me with Happy Saver because I like the way he finished up that race. Even though he didn't beat much, the horses that he beat weren't big names. Uh, the way he did it told me that he wanted longer distance. Prioritize, I'll be honest, even though his number was high, he kind of, that race fell apart into his lap. Global Campaign and Tacitus were battling it out on the front end, and Prioritize just happened to be there at the end. He, he looked tired, but it looks like he gained ground. Name Changer looked exhausted in the lane. He wasn't changing, lane, changing leads correctly. Uh, I'd be surprised if Name Changer runs a big one. Uh, Tacitus, he's another one. He hung in his last race. He had every chance to get by Global Campaign. Global Campaign's a good horse. Global Campaign's not a great horse. And Tacitus could not run him down. And I feel like Tacitus does this uh, too often. So I'm not taking even money on him. And Mystic Guide's not a bad horse, but he's another one. I, I watched the end of that race where it looks like he really closed in and, and did well in that Jim Dandy to win by three quarters of a length. But viewing it on the video, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> you know, live your beast life who just ran last in the Preakness, he was gaining ground on him. Uh, Mystic Guide kind of just got there. So getting the distance, I don't think is going to be a problem for Happy Saver, even though he hasn't got it yet. We're going with a chance, uh, taking a chance on a long shot. Long shot, two to one. Taking a chance on Happy Saver uh, in the Jack Club Gold Cup. And that wraps up our races at Belmont for this Saturday, October the 10th. Hey, it's only four weeks to the Breeders' Cup. Uh, 14 races to decide the best of the best in every division of American racing. So that is Friday, November 6th and Saturday, November 7th. We've got a lot of great stuff coming your way for that. We're going to go over, we'll probably have two videos that week. And we're going to go over, we'll have picks for all 14 Breeders' Cup races. It's going to be an exciting weekend. It, it kind of closes out the racing season here in the States. Uh, the Breeders' Cup, you'll probably see a lot of European horses coming over uh, to take part. They usually do, especially in the, the Breeders' Cup Turf Mile and the Breeders' Cup Turf. Uh, this is, once again, this is James, your U.S. racing expert, signing off. Best of luck to you, and let's win some money. Take care.